Welcome to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Today I have with me Dr. Jeffrey Razor, Director of Medical Neuro-Oncology at Northwestern University. Dr. Razor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, I did read some literature on patients with asthma or eczema with a heightened immune response in general. They seem to have lower rates of glioblastoma and uh, brain tumors in general. Can you comment on that, you know, alongside some of this data that you're talking about? Yeah, so it's, it's hard to know because a lot of these are epidemiologic studies that are done that aren't really prospectively done. We're yes. selectively finding the people that have these versus don't. It does suggest that there is some, if you have an immune hyperactivated system, that yes. maybe there is alterations in, in how these patients play out. Yes. I think, you know, the some of the challenges is the CNS has always been thought of as an immunoprivileged or immunosanctuary. Yes where there isn't a lot of immunotrafficking. Mm -hmm. We do know that there is some data when you look at other CNS inflammatory disorders like multiple sclerosis, that there is obviously trafficking of immune cells, not immune disorders. I think we deal with a unique compartment, particularly when we think about patients with brain tumors, because we know when we use some of these drugs, if they can cause an inflammatory reaction, that in itself can lead to brain swelling. Our current therapies are really to use steroids to minimize that effect. However, that suppresses your immune system, your T cells, which then may negate the effect of the therapy you're trying to give the patients. And unlike areas of lung cancer or, or melanoma, the, the cranium has a sort of fixed size and compartment, so sure. you can only tolerate so much swelling before the patient has some neurologic issues. It does raise the question, however, of whether a drug like bevacizumab could be used in conjunction with some of these immunotherapies Yes. to decrease some of the edema that the patient's experiencing and thereby not having to use steroids. But also if it does have some immunologic effects itself, there could be some synergy between the two. Absolutely. Thank you very much for this practice update today, Dr. Rinser. We appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us on this practice update.